we shouldn't immediately, I think, assume that uh, a behavioral trait, particularly a cognitive behavioral trait, um, is an adaptation. In order to really understand that statement, you need to understand what I mean by an evolutionary adaptation. I don't mean that it has some current function or utility. I mean that historically, it occurs due to selection shaping that trait specifically for that function. And there are lots of beautiful examples of adaptations. You know, eyes and wings and white coloration and animals that live in, in polar environments. And how do we know that those are adaptations? One way we can know is by using the comparative method. For example, Arctic foxes are white, whereas irregular fox is brown. Polar bears are white, whereas irregular average bear is brown. Um, hares, Arctic hares are white, whereas most bunnies are brown. You can see that um, there's a very clear trend here that, that your color of your fur is directly related to the environment that you're living in here. So that's good evidence that this is an evolutionary adaptation. But not all traits that you observe are evolutionary adaptations. Some traits are really nothing more than a spillover or what people refer to as a spandrel. It was an article written by Stephen Jay Gould, a very, very famous article, called The Spandrels of San Marco and the Panglossian Paradigm a test of the adaptationist program. Stephen Jay Gould is a modern day evolutionary biologist. You may have heard of him, very famous. His point was that he described how in Rome when they were architecture, when you have two arches um, adjacent to each other, so if you imagine an arch like this and then another arch right next to it, um, which is they, they like building a lot of arches. Um, when you have arches like that, you have this space in the upper portion that inevitably results when you make two arches and that's called a spandrel. And the spandrels in cathedrals and so on are usually very heavily embellished. They're like, you know, people decorate them and they have the statues coming out from them. So if someone's trying to think about the origin and the functional significance of spandrels and they walk into a church and they look at that and they see all these ornaments and they want to think about that as the centerpiece of the whole thing. And the reason, the origin of that is that that was the place where the artists wanted to have all this, you know, embellished. But in reality, the spandrel is just an inevitable outcome of when you have two arches. So if you're thinking about what's the origin of the tree, it's easy to get sucked into the story, and, and especially with spandrels like that, because they have all this embellishments. But you'd be totally wrong in thinking that that was the focus of any of the architecture. That was an inevitable byproduct, a side effect of building two arches. And so Stephen Jay Gould, he uses that as an example to, to explain how when we think about the origin of different traits, on the one hand, you can think of those as being shaped by natural selection and carved into function. On the other hand, you can think of those traits as being mostly shaped by the constraints of the history of the organism, the raw materials that it had, and, and the different development that might take place that, that, that results in all these different side effects. Like, for example, if you think about the human chin, what's the origin of the human chin? Well, you can talk about maybe, you know, larger chins were sexier and women liked them. You know, then you can come up with an explanation for it. But another explanation is just that it's an inevitable byproduct of the growth fields of the jaw. When you have a jaw you need to eat, you know, one thing happens is you get a chin. And so his point is that, that, that many traits that we observe are, could easily be explained as inevitable spin-offs or side effects or results of constraints with the raw materials of how we're able to do things. Like you build arches next to each other, you get a spandrel. You need to build a jaw, you get a chin. And instead of telling a story about how natural selection shaped that for a specific function, it's the better story, or the real, the true story, is that it's inevitable byproduct or side effect. Mm -hmm.